Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. Welcome back to Housefrau Friday. This is a regular weekly segment on this channel where I discuss the overlap of domestic skills and the philosophies surrounding sustainable living. So I am seeking to match the way that I run my household with the way that I run my garden and the values that I hold really dear. Today I want to talk about five ways that I help trim our grocery budget while still putting a diverse and nourishing and enjoyable array of meals on the table. And those five ways are not going to include gardening. So obviously I grow a lot of food in my permaculture garden. I do a lot of freezing and canning and dehydrating and serving fresh seasonal produce out of the garden. We also raise our own ducks and chickens, which provide about a dozen eggs a week, if not more. Um, I think actually right now it's closer to two dozen eggs a week. It fluctuates depending on the time of year. So let's talk about five ways besides gardening that I keep our family well fed on a very small grocery budget. And that family is a household of six, including a 19 year old, a 17 year old, a six foot three, almost six foot four, 14 year old who can out eat everybody because he is just growing like crazy. And an 11 year old who also is growing like crazy. These kids can eat an unbelievable amount of food and they need a well-rounded diet rich in protein and rich in all of the things that are going to help their bodies grow strong and big and help them have the energy that they need to get through the day. So number one, we had gotten a great tip years ago from a friend who has seven kids that a wonderful place to buy in bulk is restaurant supply. That is often cheaper than the food co-ops that have, you know, like drop off delivery at somebody's house or your local food co-op or your local regular grocery store's bulk bin that if you buy in bulk from restaurant supply, if that's something that you can utilize 50 pound bags of flour, 25 pound, 25 pound bags of sugar, uh, you know, 15 or 20 pound bags of onions, that restaurant supply stores often have the best prices. And I have found that to be true, much better than the big box member stores, much better than, again, those, those kinds of co-op models where you have food delivery from an organization that drops them off at someone's house and you come and pick up your share. That has been the most economical way for me to buy flour, including local brands of flour like Bob's Red Mill, to buy things like um, oats, beans, sugar, brown sugar, olive oil, large cans of tomato puree so that I can use those for making big batches of pizza sauce and then freezing them. And some kinds of produce that I can't grow enough of in my home, particularly onions. So number two is that we eat meat really sparingly. As I just said, I get a lot of beans and lentils at restaurant supply. For us, we uh, really rely on things like eggs and beans for a significant source of protein. When we buy meat, it is once a year, we buy a cow share from a local rancher that has grass-fed, grass-finished uh, share a lay. And that for us has been a really good uh, economical way to source our meat. It does require that you have a freezer that can handle 250 pounds of meat or so. It also means that we just eat meat as a side dish or as an ingredient in a larger stew. It's not something that is the main course for us. We decided many, many years ago, my kids actually decided, we listened to Barbara Kingsolver's book, Animal Vegetable Miracle as a family. And I think that my 17 year old was probably like five, I wanna say. And after listening to that book, she said, I don't wanna eat factory farm meat anymore. I don't wanna eat CAFO meat. That's confinement animal feedlot operation. I don't want to eat meat when I know that the, the animal has suffered its entire life. If we are going to be omnivorous as a family, we're going to do it in a way that we feel aligns with our ethics. In fact, that's part of the reason that we're raising turkeys this year. We want any animal that we eat to have lived a good life and not to have suffered before it comes to our table. So that means that we don't eat very much and we make it stretch. Overall, our ethics happen to do a significant job of reducing our grocery budget. When you don't eat much meat, you can spend less money when you have to source protein in other ways. And when you only get a set batch of, of meat for the whole year and you have to carefully ration it across the year, you're really responsible with how you use it and you find out that you're quite frugal. Now, we've gotten a quarter cow in the past and I think, as I said at the beginning of this video, my kids are huge and growing. 
we may end up upping that to half a share this year, uh, which would mean that I think it gives us about like four pounds a week as a family, which is not very much for six people, but it will be a little bit more than we're, we're having now where we eat meat maybe every other week. Number three is that I eat seasonally. This means that we purchase things when they are local and in season, and therefore they are cheaper. They have less of a carbon footprint. They have shipped from less of a distance using less fuel. And when you buy something in season, it has peak nutrition, peak flavor, and it is usually cheaper. That means what I cook throughout the year really varies. So that means I buy things in bulk when they are in season. For example, in late summer, early fall, I may buy a lot of pimento peppers at the store because they're cheap, abundant in season, and I will roast them, cut them up and freeze them and we can eat them in the winter. So when I say eat seasonally, I don't mean that I'm restricting us to eating just what's fresh in that season. I mean that I'm purchasing things when they are in season and I am either making sure I cook them and put them out for the family then, or I preserve them in a way that we can enjoy them later in the year. I don't buy tomatoes in the winter. I don't really buy tomatoes at all because I grow them, but you understand my point. I don't buy things when they're not in season because you'll pay a premium and it will often be shipped in a long distance and often from a country that may have different requirements, uh, less stringent requirements about the kinds of pesticides and fungicides that can be used on the food. So for us, better for our health, aligns with our values and keeps our budget tight. Number four is I practice eat down the pantry. This is a technique where Instead of getting in a habit of going to the grocery store every time we need a few things, I make a point of taking things in the back of the pantry or in the back of the freezer and I cycle them to the front so that they get used. If I have that can of, you know, Morello cherries in the back of the pantry, I don't then go to the store and buy fresh cherries or I don't then go to the store and buy peaches. I say, actually, I want to use something in the back of my pantry first making a concerted effort several times a year to eat down what we have in store. That means that I'm not having expired food in the cabinet because I eat things before they become expired. I'm not having things that just linger around until we decide we no longer want them and we donate them to the food pantry. I am making an intentional effort to eat what we have on hand before I go to the store and before I purchase anything new. It's a great way if I've had an impulse purchase or a family member has had an impulse purchase at the grocery store that it eventually gets used when it comes home. Number five, and this one may or may not be really common sense to you all, but it's something that my mom instilled in me that I have found very, very important to stay on a very slim budget. And that is that I have a well-stocked spice cabinet. My mom was always a big fan of pensies when I was growing up. I would love to sit and go through the catalog with her and pick out the various spices. And when they would arrive in the mail, every little packet would smell so good. I'm lucky enough to have a pensies store in town, but also the local grocery store. And again, restaurant supply have loads of spices that you can purchase very affordably. You don't have to go somewhere quite so bougie as pensies, although I do like supporting them as a business. And there are many spice blends I can't get elsewhere that I have to go to pensies for. Also, my local Indian grocery store and my local Asian market are two other wonderful places I can source spices economically. When you have a diverse spice cabinet, you can take the same lentils, the same yellow split peas, the same pinto beans, and you can make a really different meal with it every time. You can take those same core ingredients and transform them into a unique dish so that your diet doesn't feel monotonous, even if you are staying on a narrow range of proteins due to either, you know, your desire to be, you know, vegetarian or out of your uh, budgetary needs to trim down the cost of whatever protein you're eating. For us having a really large spice cabinet selection that again, I eat down the pantry, I eat down the spice cabinet, I make sure that I'm using it really intentionally. It's a great way to keep us enjoying and engaged and interested in our meals, but they're also cheap. Now, I will say there are certain spices, it's important to keep them in a freezer if you live in a warm climate, especially like chilies, um, different chili powders. There often are um, insect eggs that are in those products and they will last much longer in your freezer. Other certain spices that may have a high oil content also keep better in the freezer, they don't go rancid. So I expand the life of my spice cabinet by keeping certain spices in the freezer. So thank you for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please check out my Patreon down below and click like and subscribe to see more permaculture content. 
I hope that this was helpful for you all. I hope that you don't feel that you can only enjoy kind of like a really narrow range of food, the same five dishes over and over, beans and rice or scrambled eggs and, you know, fruit salad, if you are on a tight budget. Absolutely can stick within your budget, uphold your values, live within your means, and have a really delicious, diverse array of dishes that you serve your family. There's no need for monotony just because you embrace frugality. I'll be back really soon for my permaculture garden. Thanks.